Cool. All right, guys. Um, so back again with another MVP Friday and super, super pumped today um, to have our man, Masaya Kefu, you're on, bro. Welcome to MVP Friday. Thanks, man. Appreciate, excited? appreciate it. Yeah. I really do. I'm excited, man. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Um, guys, yeah, like yeah. as as you all know, like this is literally my favorite part of the weekend. Look, if you don't have a pen and paper, make sure you get a pen and paper right now to take some notes. So, reason why we asked um, Moss to to get on to MVP Friday today, not only has you know he's added twenty or so clients in the last sort of five weeks, the man just takes a ton of action, and what he's doing, it's like. It's the basics done extremely well. And if you look at any of his training, if you look at his results, that's basically him in a nutshell, just doing everything, the basics really fucking well, but on a very, very high level. So um, make sure you guys take some notes in. And this is essentially a blueprint if you guys want to add, you know, 20 or so clients in the next five weeks. So Moss, my man, can you introduce yourself, brother, and let us know who you are, um, who you coach, and yeah, what brought you to the Mumba program? Yeah. Yeah. So first off, thanks, man. I appreciate you guys for um, for tuning in. But um, yeah, I am um, Coach Moss and I'm a sports nutritionist and um, I've been working online for the past, I think it's about two years now. Um, and I've also been working part time with my uncle who owns um, a few gyms. So I've been content for him on the side, doing a bit of online coaching as well. Um, and I mainly work with people um, who are wanting to tidy up like their body composition and also improve their relationship yep. with food. Um, and especially, um, yeah, just working around people who who really just struggle to get results and who purely just rely on just their workouts in the gym. And so um, I usually just work on work with them one-on-one -on, -one on, on, on managing their nutrition and getting them some like long-lasting fat loss result, results in general. Yep. Yeah, mad bro. One one thing you just said there, man, like um struggling to get the results with just their workouts in the gym. Can you expand on that just a little bit more, man? Yeah, for sure. So um so before being a nutritionist, like I struggled to get clients' results um prior to being a nutritionist because I was only coaching them for the 45 minutes in the gym. And so it was kind of like um a little bit annoyed because he's a session with me and then they go home and then they eat all this food come back and wouldn't make any progress and so i get so frustrated and i, I tell myself like, what's the point of coaching someone if i can't teach them how to manage their nutrition um hence why i became a qualified sports nutritionist and it also allows me to work with athletes as well and and gen pop as well and 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 all of that so um, and a lot of people do come to me in regard to, especially around fat loss um i i am a competitive natural bodybuilder so um, I do specialize in a lot of fat loss um, and yep. a lot of people who come and seek help or reach out for coaching um, usually do a lot of like six week, eight week challenges, a lot of like yo-yo dieting and years of yep. just restrictive diets. And so once, you know, once they reach out, they see my content, they're like, yeah, this is the guy I want, I want to talk to when it comes to improving my relationship with food and, and, and so forth. Yeah. No, I love that, man. Like, um, cause it is, it is a bit of a like curse in the fitness industry. Like, one of the hardest things, obviously, like just the psychology of the everyday person, they do want a quick result. They're like, fuck, I can do this the easy way, get a quick result, and then I'm cured forever. But we all know that's just not how it works. Yeah, right. So um, in terms of that, man, what have you found that has been, I guess, helpful for being able to get that message across? Because most people know, but for them to actually be like, okay, cool, I'm going to buy into the long-term process, the sustainable habits. How have you been able to show that inside of your content? So the, that's actually a good question. So what what I usually do is I usually looking at like my my check in forms and figuring out areas where my clients really struggle with, and I usually make a lot of content around that, um, tied in yep. with a lot of the venom posting schedule. Um, yep. And how we work one on one with each other is by. I'm a, I'm a big believer in like communication and I set the standard off, off the initial consultation. And it's like, if you don't want to work hard, then I'm not going to be the right coach for you because I'm very hands-on and I'm very open to communicating. And if you're not going to be like that, then we're not going to be the right fit. So setting the standard and, and the intentions of the first initial consultation, it goes a long way. The last thing I want is 
coaching people and not checking in on time and they're not they're not responding to my messages and they're not putting in the work and it's like you know don't don't get upset about the results that you don't put in the work for so yeah that's typically what i what i do man well, I love that. And it's it's so true, eh, man? And like we we often as coaches, like sometimes we don't want to say that because we're scared we might lose a client. But ultimately, yeah. hey, we 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 do ourselves a disservice and we're probably doing the clients a disservice. Um, man, if I don't remind me throughout this call, because I might unpack that a little bit about how you have that conversation. But I guess, man, like um you were sort of like being an online coach for a couple of years now. Um, were you coaching in person before that or what were you sort of doing beforehand? Yeah, so I was actually coach PT in club and I also had my own um, boot camps and stuff um, and yeah, before I transitioned to online. Yep. How did you um, how did you make that initial transition, man? I honestly just just um, just just did it like I, I'm that type of person who's very like just do it and I don't think about like the consequences or like the risks I'm just like just do it and so I just transitioned on and um, I actually joined another uh, online coaching men mentorship um, uh, I think it was 2020 the first year I initiated my online coaching business and um, yeah and that that's that's how I transitioned to online from from face to face yeah, man, bro. And, and I guess probably the first thing um, we have to work on, you know, as, a, as an online coach is, is building your audience. And um, one of the things I think you mentioned, and, I, and I, if I'm wrong, man, please, please let me know. But I heard you built a little bit of an uh, audience on TikTok, and now you've got a pretty good following on Instagram, man. Um, do you want to sort of share with us how you're making the most of those two platforms and how you're growing your audience? Yes. So on, on TikTok, um, so I think it was in like January, I was sitting at like, it would have been like 4,000 followers. And then at the moment I'm at 59K. So I was posting like four to five TikToks a day, just about like training tips and stuff. Um, yep. And then that also, the content that I was posting on TikTok, I just repurposed that on Instagram. And so my Instagram went from, I think it was like, 1800 followers to around 5.8k um and it was just about like all i was doing was just repurposing content um but um yeah i was just super consistent with my content and um once i started to dial down on the four quarter and on the venom and, and the whole mumba blueprint um because i had a, a, a ton of hot leads and i was just pumping up non-stop content there was a bunch of hot leads but i didn't have the system in place to actually convert them into clients so Abs yeah. absolutely <laughs> no that's mad bro and like um man like before obviously like tiktok just didn't blow up overnight like what was the content yeah. you were posting and was there anything you started to notice where you were starting to get like a little bit of momentum yeah so with my tiktok um i just got really clear on my on niche and my avatar um yep. and what i did was i'd spend um one so i'd film at my uncle's gym at i'd start filming in p.m and then i'd finish filming by like 12 12 a.m in the morning and i'd batch that amount of content and for for like a month and so what i was able to do was i was able to just pump out as much content as possible whilst um you know I guess messaging people and, and doing all that lead gen stuff and over time it i just started to see a huge influx in followers and engagement um and i also started a lot of fights online as well because it's the the content that i post is pretty controversial like i post like a lap pull down exercise and be like oh no that's not the proper way to do it this is how you do it and so um i just got really good at like starting fights in the comment section and it actually boosted my 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 content on on TikTok. but my instagram is a little bit of a different story because a lot of people on instagram actually i know i, I know a lot of people on instagram so yeah there, there was a there's a bit of a yeah difference between those two platforms well i love that like i've never heard anyone say that and but right now i'm like fuck that's actually brilliant so how do you go and pick fights on tiktok yeah so <laughs> what i what i do is I'll, I'll start off with like a triggering hook so it'll be like um 
it'd be like you know three reasons why you're not losing your body yep. a busy dad and what i'll do is i'll just talk about a topic and it'll be a topic that's pretty controversial and obviously with tiktok there's so many people who have their two sets and so a lot of people would just add in you know they in the comment sections different you know opinions and then i would just kind of gaslight them and then everyone would just kind of like have your own opinions but that's kind of how i did it on my tiktok yeah but in a yeah, good man. way but in a good way as well educating a lot yeah, of people just as a, well yeah ab absolutely bro and like it's you see it all the time like with some of the big profiles in um instagram and it you know it's you don't often see it with smaller profiles but you see the big like Dr. Mike Rizzatel and those sorts of guys, like everyone's yeah. having an argument. Like Coach Chasm, they're always arguing against each other and yeah. stuff like that. Um, mm. And it makes sense why their profiles are so big because there's essentially this fight about a lap pull down in the comments. And I'm like, well, yeah. you know, everybody's engaging. So, nah, fucking brilliant, man. And um, I guess, man, like with some of your TikTok content, did you find there was a different style that worked or was it, you know, what was the stuff that sort of, popped off on there yeah so for like a, a solid it was like two years i was posting on, on TikTok and i only get like 80 views 100 views and then what i did was was i did a little bit of study and i got very clear in my avatars as before and then i also learned how to use a bit more i, I changed my language as well on TikTok as well and a lot of people like i get a lot of um, like my, like a lot of other personal trainers will say, like, don't say toned, like toning is not a thing, but yeah, a lot of people that are in my avatar talk about toning. So the language that I'll use with my content, because at the end of the day, my content is for, for people who struggle with fat loss and all that stuff, not, not other. So I don't care about what other coaches, cause I'd get a ton of coaches comment on my kids. Um, and and it's like you know i'm not posting my content for you it's for my niche and my avatar yeah that's it man i think um a lot of that's where look if you guys want to go and talk to coaches and have coaches pat you on the back you know go and yeah. go and talk like that but if you want actual clients learn to speak their language you know and and that's why um you know i posted on my facebook page today about me eating a cookie you know and that's the thing that got me a client and um <laughs> One of, one of my mates, good mates, and he's a, a very fucking good member student, six. He, one day, I remember he posted Jack Daniels a Jim Beam. And like that got him a client, <laughs> you know, and it's, but he's relating to his clients. And it's like, you know, like it's, what's, what's the neuromuscular tone? You know, what's the status of your nervous system? No one fucking cares, but they do want a nice tone tummy and stuff like that. So you know, and, and the great thing is, and, and I think you do this brilliantly, bro, is like you're able to take, you know, the sports science, the nutrition science, and then also be able to make that so that, you know, the everyday person can understand it. And so having that science is brilliant because you're going to get the result that you're actually talking about. It's it's quite often you see people say this stuff and it's like, hey, it'll help you get toned. And then all they do is they throw a sledgehammer at them, starve them, and then, you know, it's it doesn't back it up. And that's why you're getting such great results. But um, that's that's pretty cool, man. And I guess um, one of the big things now, man, obviously, like, you know, you've been doing a lot of this work. Now you sort of come into Mumba, bro, and, and it's been a fucking awesome to see you, man, just grow and grow and grow. I know exactly why you've grown. You know, there's the there's the recipe there. It's like every day you're doing the work. But for you, man, what would you say over the last five weeks have been the top three to five things that you do every single day to make sure you're bringing in new leads, new clients? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So essentially what got me, you know, um, got me to where I am now was, um was just utilizing the the mumba uh the venom posting schedule and really just dialing into my brand so when i first started i was like what the hell is a branding voice and then i was talking to lee a lot about it and then i started to get an understanding and so one thing i do a lot is yeah have a look at my venom posting schedule see what i need to post and look at my branding voice and utilizing chat gbt i can kind of like map everything together so that it makes it really it just spits out really um informative slash basic information for my my avatar and then making sure that i'm consistent with it i i listen to i think it's one of i think it was a podcast i think it was one of your podcasts but you're talking about like 
the the art of like selling or or well, I wouldn't say selling, but the art of converting two clients a week. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like my mindset around um around my 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 posting schedule. It's just like you've just got to help two people. That's all you got to do. Um, and then just a matter of just staying consistent at it, and then yep. um, yeah, just sticking with the basics. Because one thing that I do a lot is if if I I didn't have the venom the venom posting schedule, I would be all over the place, and then I'd just be I'd just be super overwhelmed. But having that posting schedule in place, I can kind of just look at my branding voice and then just time together, just go from there. Yep. Yeah, fucking yeah. awesome, man. Like in terms of like the brand voice and, and that, and like how do you go about sitting down and actually working your way through it so that it speaks to your avatar? Yeah, so what I actually do is because like you guys have done a few chat GBT um, trainings is is I'll get the branding voice template that you guys have in Mamba and then I'll get my feedback that I get from client check-in forms. And so I'll together and I'll, I'll tell it to spit out some information about like write me 50 pieces of content on, you know, um, sustainable long-term fat loss, 50 reasons why, you know, you, you'll never lose body fat just from doing keto for the rest of your life. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just about, I, that. that's pretty much what I've done um yeah to utilize my my branding voice and then each week i review it i actually look at my branding voice every single day um before i post the content just to make sure that i'm not posting for the sake of this is what i want to post it's what by mm. how can i help someone yeah i fucking love that man that's that's absolutely beautiful and then in terms of that man like so with our obviously our posting flow you know we got connection post um social proof behind the scenes relatability and value so Maybe in terms of, man, how do you weave in some of your connection posts? Like, how do you get your content ideas for that? <clears throat> yeah, no, that, that's a great question. So with my connection, what I like to do is I like to talk about and expand on the thing I like to do on a daily basis. Once I started doing that, I started to connect with a lot more people, especially my avatar, because essentially I am my avatar. Um, because I did struggle in the past with my fat loss and all that stuff until I reached out to a nutritionist. Um, mm -hmm. And that's essentially what I do is just get real, real, uh, real clear on that. Yeah, man. With, then if we go to like a social proof post, bro, how are you sort of, and I, one of my favorite posts that you did, and I was like, man, that was like, I've literally taken that now and doing it a lot myself is you had your client. This is my client. I think um, he lost 10 kilos. This is how we did it. How did you sort of come up with, I guess, um, that green screen type formula to share the results of your client? <laughs> so I honestly just, just over the years of just seeing a lot of love. On TikTok a lot, you, our clients' transformations and me talking in front of my client, it kind of paints me more of an authority rather than just talking out of my ass. Because see, I see a lot of coaches out there just saying, you know, join this program and this is what you get. But I like you, you, you don't get clients from your program. Nobody cares about your program. It's, it's the results that produce, you know, um, interest. So that's, that's how I thought of it. And it's like, okay, well, I've gotten all the social proof of my client for the past 16 weeks. I've got his meal prep photos. I've got his weigh-ins. I've got his check-in forms. Um, I have um, videos and photos of him training. I've got so much social proof. Why wouldn't I just show that to my audience? Because that's exactly what they're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, how do you? So it's kind of like um it's, as as I'm as I'm coaching clients, I'm kind of like documenting their journey. And if I if I have, you know, if let's say for example, it's like post up a some social proof, I'll go look into my my messaging uh conversations with my clients and I'm like, oh shit, yeah, she's got her photos there, she's got this there, she's got that. And I'll just all together and make a reel out of it yeah fucking notes bro like one of the things i think you did there man that like because you have had this experience and you know how to craft this what do you think about when you're going to tell this story because it is you're documenting the journey like yeah what where do you sort of find the start point the middle point and the end point how do you sort of document that yeah so i'll talk to leah and it's obvious it's it's really 
I guess the obvious with Mamba, it's just pain solution and then CTA. That's literally yep. all, it, all it is. And I think a lot of people, well, myself, I got it very, very mixed up because I was so overwhelmed. But if they get so, I guess if you can emphasize their pain off the, off the first top of your reel, then it's got to do very well. But if you're just blabbering on about something else, then, you know, people just have, people will just flip past it. So like, I'll get really clear on my client's plan. I'll be like, my client lost 20 kilos as a busy dad. Um, and this is, how, and then I paint the, the pain and then I paint the, the, the solution and then I give the CTA at the end. And that's kind of how I do it. And then it's just a matter of just fine tuning how I use my words and how, and I emphasis more triggering language and language that resonates with my avatar and not just spitting out words that relate that, that I think that's, that's ideal. It's about my client and their pain points and the avatar's language. It's all about avatar language when, it, when I'm posting my content, because well, what got me to 59,000 followers on TikTok was just using, you know, language such as like, this is the reason why you don't feel any neutricips and, you know, th- and it was just using a lot of language that my avatar uses and my clients as well. And yeah, fucking brilliant, man. So, bro, like obviously content is a massive part of it. Um, and, and like obviously though, people don't just flood into your inbox. So in terms of what you've been doing, man, to um to generate obviously leads, conversations, bookings, and now sales, you know, what do you sort of do every day to make sure you're filling up your pipeline? Yeah, so as I said again, it just goes back to following the, the Mumba blueprint. Uh, if you, it, it, I've literally just been following it. Mm-hmm. And the the main the main thing I've been doing is just staying consistent with it, um, and over time it just produces different conversations. Like I'll have I'll do a whole day's worth of just like I'll film I'll walk into the gym and I've got a back day programmed and I'll and I'll film all my exercises, and what I'll do is I'll I'll go on ChatGPT and I'll and I'll plug in okay so this is a bent over row explain the benefits on it. And let's say I've got a lap pull down, a bent over row, a lap push down, a seated row. I'll film all of that. And then I'll have different segments on like, this is how you do a seated row. These are the benefits. You know, would you, do you prefer using straps or no straps when it comes to a lap pull down? And it's just starting different conversations. Like when it, when it's like, if I'm out at like at the beach or something, I'll talk about something at the beach and then I'll spark different conversations about that. Mm-hmm. And so it's just being really, I guess, friendly on social media and and not coming across like too much of an authority and that's why I think mama has got good balance because you can be a really it's good to be an authority like how you do your social proof post mm-hmm. but if you're just all this is me and oh, yeah, yeah, like I could post photos of me shredded all the time but that kind of scares my avatar so having that balance with Mumba like the re- re- uh, relatability the connection the social proof um, I also apply that to my stories as well because I get a lot of a lot of story views as well so that's kind of how I, how, yep. how I do it do, do you find, man, because like, you know, your content sort of is relatable and that once you start your conversations, people are sort of connecting a lot faster? Oh, 100%, man. Like, it's it's just, um, uh, yeah, like the content that I post is, it, it'll be like very informative. Like people can take value from it straight away. Every single, you know, post that I post, I want to make sure that people can take value from it straight away. Um, and the connection posts, is what really um kind of kind of sets the tone when it comes to first you know starting a conversation with someone they don't look at you like oh this guy's just a big buff dude that's just lifts up heaps of weight he can you know he yeah. struggles with you know this and this just like i do and 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 it allows me to connect with people as well and i'm also doing podcast as well because you sent me that yeah. podcast template and i actually signed up my first client yesterday off a podcast because i was talking about my struggles as a bodybuilder and my and like my prep and like the the struggles that i went through prep and starving myself and depriving myself and all that stuff and with my podcast i kind of like emphasized connection um and and yeah man it just all goes back to to like mamba man like the blueprint yeah it's 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 really crazy man and like um i guess like when i was sort of figuring out my own online journey. Like I'd been through a few online coaches and stuff like that. And when I started to figure out like 
copywriting and you know I'd, I'd sort of post about my dramas with my sharing and stuff like that and then people are just reaching out saying bro you're fucking talking directly to me and i was like as soon as that started to happen i was like it just clicked i was like this was the missing link i was missing me and i was missing my ability to actually show hey i'm a real person and understand what these people are going through it was fucking crazy um with with your podcast man like so following that mumba flow man in, in terms of the podcast um what platform do you put it out or how do you just go live on your instagram how are you sort of running these uh podcasts so what i'll do man is i'll use um i'll use so i've got my road mics so i'll use yep. the and i'll connect it to my iphone and i'll just sit here yep. go on chat gbt and write down a whole um utilize chat gbt and write down a podcast a podcast template you yep. and then tying it back to my branding voice and avatar so what i'll do is i'll create like 10 15 20 episodes and then I'll have all of that organized so that when I wake up in the morning, it's just like, boom, I just press play. And um, yeah, so I recorded on my podcast, which is like a Spotify. Um, it's like a Spotify app where you you talk through it with your mic and then it uploads to Spotify. And then I just share my Spotify every morning um, after I've done all my like value posts, because I found that as soon if I post the training tip video on my story first thing in the morning, it blows up. Because so many people get value from it and gets a lot of engagement. And while, whilst that's getting a lot of engagement, I'll plug my Spotify there with the link right after it. So a lot of people will um, tap on it. And um, yeah, I think I'm at like, I've been doing podcasts five days a week for I think three weeks now. And I've got, uh, I think it's like 50 or something followers and it it, it works. It's, it's it's actually really cool. And I, and I enjoy it as well, which is a, which makes it a lot easier for me to pump out the content because I genuinely enjoy it. Yeah. So yeah, man, that's it. Eh? And like, you do have to enjoy this stuff and like podcasts are great. Like um, YouTube's great. Like this is legit. This is my favorite piece of content right here is this MVP. Like um, one of, one of the things that you sort of said there was, was very, very insightful. You know, it's like, What's your top performing piece of content? Because in this game, in this game as an online coach, our goal is to get attention and then to hold attention. So one of the things with obviously a short form piece of content, you can get a shit ton of views. You can get a shit ton of, you know, attention from that short form content. From there, linking it to a long form piece of content, you've now just taken that authority piece miles higher. Yeah. And so one of the things with that is like short form content gets people to know and like you long form gets them to trust you. And so yep. that is just a perfect fucking recipe, man. Um, I absolutely love that. Um, one thing you could do, man, is, is once a week too. And so over time, one of, one of my mentors is a copywriting lady and her thing is uh, she just has a massive email list. So what she'll do once a week is she'll send out an email of her best five tips. So it's like, hey, this is my most listened to podcast. This is my most listened to piece of content. Um, you know, here's a couple of things that you can do. Subscribe to my email list. And that email list has gone massive. And I seen her do a launch of like $300,000 in 14 days. And 60% of that came from an email list, 30% came from her um, Instagram, and then another five or so percent was from ads. But yeah, it's it's a wicked, wicked thing. And man, I guess shifting gears just a little bit now, bro. So one of the big things that I, I think that has made you really, really successful, bro, is you just lead by example and how do you lead by example without as you said being this buff dude that just lifts heaps and heaps of weight um but also still being that leader if he's still here ainsley can you hear me yes are you there moss yeah no that's yeah, sorry, a, yeah can you hear me yeah, yeah gotcha. that's a great question um yeah so uh so what I do is I, I just document my days. Um, and then as I'm documenting my days, I'll just al- always plug in some sort of like some sort of value. And like for me, I I need to always make sure that I am in like alignment with my avatar as well. Um, and that that helps me create more of an authority and it kind of helps me motivate and inspire people who yep. 
who are struggling with those steps to losing body fat. Uh, so I embarked on a fat loss phase on Monday and me being in a, I just, I'm walking on the treadmill. I'm like, just post about this chat GBT and write down the benefits of, you know, treadmill work and then write down why this means a lot to you. And I just document what's on my mind. So I'm always walking, I'm always stretching. I'm always doing like prepping my meals. And if I'm, I take my, I document my entire day. Like if I'm, if I am um, cooking my meals, I'll just jump on TikTok live quickly and just like quickly film me. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a matter of just, just, just staying consistent with that. Must keep talking. I think Dylan's just frozen. I think everyone's frozen. <laughs> well, if you're in Sydney, the fucking weather's doing it. I know that much. Everyone hear me again? Gotcha. Gotcha, bro. You there, Moss? Yep. Yeah, sorry, Can you hear me? Dropped out. Um, cool. Sorry, man. So yeah, uh, we you were documenting your journey, which was which was pretty sick, man. So I guess switching gears once again, man. Um, now man, like you're a beast, bro. You train hard, you work hard, you know, you're you're growing a fucking awesome business. You baby, bro, you baby. So how are you now? transitioning to to being a, a dad a family man and making sure you know all of this still gets done so i guess like there is no balance and greatness and you know we we can say what we want but how are you going to can you continue to to keep up this momentum and, and make sure you're still striving for all the things you want to do while still you know maintaining family life that's a great question and um honestly like uh, being a coach and and loving health and fitness, it's it's a lifestyle, so I don't struggle with it at all. And obviously, yeah. there, there's times where you get tired, like I get tired and and having to change diapers and nappies and feed them and all that stuff. But um, when it comes down to me and my work, when it comes down to like training, my diet, you know, managing my family, all that stuff, man, like I genuinely love health and fitness, and it's a lifestyle, and I love every single 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 bit, hour, and every minute of it, man, and. Um, you know, sometimes it gets overwhelming, but you know, everything you always, you always want to get overwhelmed every now and then. Absolutely, bro. Like you get overwhelmed. You hear it like our clients, you know, desk workers, they're always stressed out and overwhelmed. <laughs> like, well, yeah, why don't yeah, you do something sure. you actually love doing? And be stressed out at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for bro. sure. And like, like just from there, bro, it just sounds like. It's, it's fucking pure passion and, and obsession that drives you. Like, where do you think that comes from? Um, I honestly think it comes from uh, just people who, who've doubted me in the past and people who, um, you know, who, who've tried to bring me down. I think that, that kind of what, that, that's what motivates me and knowing that I started from rock bottom um, and knowing that, you know, if I can do it, anyone else can do it. And I've seen you guys do it. A lot of the fellow Mumba coaches do it. And I'm like, man, these guys are killing it. So if they can do it, I can do it as well. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely, bro. Yeah, man. Um, I know too, like it, it hasn't necessarily come easy. Like it sounds like, hey, look, this has just been a straightforward journey. But talking to Leah before, you know, like through some of your coaching calls and that, bro, what were some of the things that, you know, were a challenge for you and how did you sort of overcome those? Yeah, so, man, you guys have been such a good help. Uh, honestly, um, it's been a game changer, especially checking in with, with Leah. Um, so Leah knows that I'm a huge overthinker and 
Um, yep. When I first started, I was like, holy shit, there's so much to do. I'm already getting overwhelmed. But um, yep. just having the Mumba blueprint there and just following it and understanding like, man, you know, for your clients, they're not going to be perfect at tracking their macros and calories off the first week. And the same thing applies yep. to you with your, your your fitness business as well. So just making sure that I was like communicating to Leah, even when things didn't make sense. Like I still remember when Leah would message me and I'd be like, yep, and it still didn't make sense. I would just be like, just keep asking questions and and keep learning. Um, and just showing up to, you know, to to, to our check-in calls and and listening to all, all of this, uh, all, all the um all the lives really helped me kind of manage everything starting off uh with Mumba. And it took me about three to four weeks to get the hang of it. Um, and then yep. once I, well, I'm that type of person, when I get momentum, I don't stop. And it's it's really good having Mumba there. Yeah, that's it, man. Cool. Um, I guess, bro, like, you're, I guess, have some great insights. Like, obviously, being through some awesome journeys yourself, you've seen um, your uncle with a couple of gyms as well. Let's say, and for me, man, right now, like, I'm, I'm sort of seeing it, you know, there's not a lot of coaches coming through. And, and a lot of coaches are doing it really tough out there. What would be some sort of advice to, um, you know, what you've seen and, and sort of how you've broken through? What would be your advice to those guys? Um, okay, so for like for me personally, one thing that that really helped me and and, and transforming you know, like my, my business and and all that stuff was just, um, I guess having a plan and structure and then and then following following it. Um, I'm a huge believer in like if you're not consistent with the basics for at least thirty days in a row, then you have no excuse to say that it didn't work. And that's a that's that's one of the principles and the morals that I have with my clients. And I kind of stick yeah. by that with, with Mumba as well. So it's going to be overwhelming. Yeah. It's going to be challenging. And you're going to see, you're going to get shiny object syndrome and you're going to see all these other content creators, but just do what you love to do and believe in yourself. And and you have the plan there. Be unique. Like people, people can smell, you know, fakeness. Be, be you because if you're yourself, then you, you're going to be so authentic and you'll stick out. And yeah, just just stay consistent with the basics of Mumbo, and um, and over yep. time, those small habits will will compound, and you'll you'll have an amazing business and and support and a lot of awesome clients. Yeah, bro, and I, and I think you nailed it on the head there, man. Like the only thing people can't replicate is us at the moment, anyway. Maybe AI will do it soon, and <laughs> we'll be um they'll be able to create a fake moss, but. I think it's going to take a while. And, and I think like you just, you absolutely nailed it, bro. Like being ourselves, being who we are, because one, it's the connection. We are an avatar, you know, and, and we are, people can see through it. Like in the social media world now, especially because they have seen so much bullshit for years, you know, only the real survive now. Only the real are the ones that are thriving. So yeah. I love that, bro. I guess, um, you're doing every single day to make sure your business grows from so, maybe when you wake up to when you go to sleep what are you doing <clears throat> yep so it's funny because I, I used to follow like i used to do all this bull crap in the morning i used to do like meditation breath work and i used to do podcasts and like stretching and i do have a really big morning routine and i used to get overwhelmed but once i joined mamba i was able to get like real clear on like you just need to sign up two clients a day. So in order for me to do that, I just need to wake up, get straight to work, follow the blueprint, and then do my training, do my nutrition, making sure that I'm tracking my food. Because as I said before, if I'm not alignment, if I'm not in alignment with my avatar and with what I'm doing, then it's gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna come to my to my work. So um, yeah, I'll just wake up in the morning, um, look at my to do list, execute it. As soon as I've done my my four quarter method, um, so like my uh, what is it like my connection story post, my um, social proof story post, all that good stuff, and then um, yeah, just train, come home, and then just repeat it. And then at night time, what I usually do is just follow up with leads um, and make sure that each week I've got at least three calls booked. That's it, bro. And what let's say, bro, let's say it's Friday afternoon. You're on yeah. one booking for the week. What would be your sort of mindset to make sure, hey, by Sunday, look, I got my three bookings. Mm. So I I was getting anxiety yesterday because I didn't book three calls. So I just made the decision. 
get in the office and fucking book some calls. So I booked three calls and I signed them up yesterday. So it's just a matter of like taking action and getting out of my own head because I'm my worst enemy. And I think the best thing that I can do in those situations, is just like, you've just got to choose to actually just get the work done. Um, just like our clients, they don't want to do their steps. They don't want to track their food, but they've, you've just got to take action and you've just got to do it. And if it's a Friday afternoon and I've only got one book, uh, one call booked, I'll do whatever it takes to book another two calls. Um, yeah, that's, that's typically, that's what I would do. Yeah. That's that mumba mentality, bro. That's, no, yeah, that's man. fucking awesome, bro. And, um, cool, bro. So man, final thing. And, and I fucking love this question. So when you hang up the boots, bro, when you hang up the old lifting belt and you, you finish with your career, what are they going to write on the gravestone of your career? Fuck. Um, I actually had a lot of, I had a few people tell me this, um, is that um, I'm, I'm relentless when it comes to posting my, like posting my content and all that stuff. So I don't know, it, it had to do, it had to be something to do with like relentless efforts or like relentless consistency, something, something along the lines of that. Yeah. Fucking awesome, bro. And, um, five years from now, who are you, where are you? And what are you doing? So five years from now, um, my my goal is to have um, over a hundred clients um, in person, and over a hundred clients. Sorry, over a hundred clients online, um, and over over around fifty clients in person. Um, and I want to have a few coaches underneath me managing the back end of everything. Um, and I just want to be um, a positive role model to my clients and. Um, and just setting the standard with everything. That's kind of where I want to be within the next five months um, and enjoying the fuck out of health and fitness because that's why we do it. Uh, fucking love it, bro. Nah. Man, fucking awesome. And yeah, it's just a credit to your work ethic um, yeah. and just that pure grit bro that pure grit and pure just love and passion for the industry and i love to see it man um guys what we'll do now um yeah if, if you have any questions for moss we'll, we'll just open it up um a couple of minutes so just raise your hands um if you do if not we will kick it off there uh,